All right, folks, in uh, certain simulation problems which involve contact uh, between the rigid, uh, between objects, two dimensional objects, uh, it is a lot more efficient if the uh, solid elements that are used are of the hexahedral type. Okay, uh, and I have done uh, several several video video tutorial on explicit analysis, where is a ball, for example, or a sphere uh, impacting a flat plate or a plate. And uh, uh, it, it is more efficient if you actually model that ball, if that is the plan, with hexahedral element, as I pointed out. Now, of course, uh, depending on the problem, you may want to do it as a rigid body. You might, may want to do it as analytical rigid surface, uh, which incidentally cannot be done for uh, a ball. But anyway, uh, for uh, uh, if you're modeling it as with elements, then hexahedral is probably more uh, fav favorable in the problem. Now here is a situation where a ball has been modeled with tetrahedral. These are the free meshing, uh, basically things that look like pyramid. And this is the uh, hex version of that. So this uh, he hex version on the right hand side can be more efficient and more accurate than the one on the left if, for example, it's something hitting a wall and you want to find a contact, etc. These particular drawings are done or uh, taken from the source down here. And in fact, this person has done that problem in the Abacus CAE in a step by step fashion. So I'm going to replicate those steps to show you what the differences are between the uh, the icon, the, inter the interface of Abacus CAE, and the 3D experience, because uh, it, it's, 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 it's not easy. Although you, one may be an Abacus user, Abit Ab Abacus user, it's not easy to do the same thing in the uh, 3D experience platform, in spite of the fact that the, the buried uh, FEA solver is, in fact, the uh, Abacus program. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I want to remind you that in order to do that, I have to do a uh, partitioning of a, an object. Uh, so uh, in order to do the partitioning of an object, uh, I have to go to the model prep app after I create a finite element model. And uh, the, by the way, vi video videos, uh, maybe two and three or one and two in this playlist dealt with the issue of partitioning. So may you may want to look at it if you uh, or don't feel comfortable. Anyway, here is after you create a finite element model, uh, you go to the model prep app, and there there is a tab which says, uh, "Oops, uh, the idealized." This, this is the wrong, wrong place. It says uh, the idealized tab right there is going to have an icon which is called the uh, uh, partitioning icon. Okay, so that's the route that we're going to go. All right, the dimensions are not critical except that well, I'll make my just so that I have a better idea of what size things I'm dealing with. I'm going to make the radius of a 300 millimeter. So uh, why don't I make a uh, an arc with that center going there, and I'm going to dimension this thing to be 100 100 millimeters. Okay, good. Now, uh, the idea is to take this thing and shaft it about the vertical axis, uh, uh, which can, can be done, but if you're gonna shaft this thing, it better be a closed curve, or you create an axis system here. Uh, let, me, let me do that, so I go to the line, uh, an axis. This is an axis, it's not a line. I don't have to close this anymore. When I exit and I shaft it, it uses that in order to create the, 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 the sphere. If I wanted to, uh, if I didn't have an axis, I would have to close it with either that, that boundary on the left side should be a line, or uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, so uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, create a finite element model of this. If you go all the way to the top, all the way to the top, this is a solid sphere, by the way, you can either go to, you can either go to the, uh, here you can either go to structure model creation or you simply put the cursor there, right click, insert, finite element model. Uh, same thing. Okay? At the end of the day, it's going to be the same thing. Okay, right there. Now, 
Notice that uh, I'm still not in the I'm not still not in the uh, the meshing module or the uh, basically structure model creation. What I have to do if I double click on this, if I double click on this, it will send me to the uh, structure model creation structure model creation app here. Okay, so let me show you the the, the slide here. So you're there. You go to change to model prep. What does that mean? So you go here, model prep, you click on it. It says, what is it that you want to prep, basically? So here's my spear, it selected it. Good. Now you have a idealized tab. So this was a mistake. As you can see, the idealized tab, this arrow should have been here. OK, idealized tab, here's the partition. You click on it and read it carefully. It says. Uh, cutting, uh, cutting, uh, oh, here, uh, model to partition, volume to partition. So you go and select the, 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 the whole shaft. So we just put the cursor there, click it. And for cutting element, let's start doing these planes one by one. So X, Y plane. Okay. There you are. Do it again. Once again, select this. With the cutting plane, Y, Z plane. Say okay. There it is. Last one. Again, select the sphere and exit plane. And we say OK. So notice that I have partitioned this. And do not forget to exit. You have to exit. Exit. OK. Now you're going to go because you have a, a, a basically a part that has been partitioned. So you go to uh, look at all the possibilities that you have. This is the free meshing that I don't want to do. Okay, as a matter of fact, let me do that for you. I'm going to delete it. I'll make this thing 10. I'll, I'll delete that, but I want to show you. There we are. I don't want that. Cancel. Okay. So you go to partition hex mesh. You click on it. You select this support. And let's start with 10 millimeters. And you say mesh. There we are. You say okay. Let me hide the mesh so let's hide the parts so that we can see the mesh better. So for example, right click uh, visibility manager, uh, hide the part. There we are. Just leave it there. Incidentally, just just let me point out to you. Let me double click on this. Notice that I did select hex only. Okay, I could have done this. Let's try this one. Hex dominant. You, uh, right there, you can see that there is there is actually a wedge element here. But let's go back. Hex dominant or hex only, if possible. Sometimes it may not be possible. There we are. Okay. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it. That's uh, pretty much it. And uh, we have uh, managed to uh, yeah, replicate the steps of this guy with uh, uh, hex, uh, hex element. Now, let's do one more thing before we give up. Uh, let me go ahead and change this thing to maybe 50. Well, actually, let me make it uh, 30. You know, the, the, the radius of this thing was 100. So actually, let me make it 20. See how it looks like. Maybe 50. Well, 20. There we are. So it's a coarser mesh. All right, good luck.